Hi friends, in this video we will quickly revise Anisant history for prelims 2024. So let's start. So Anisant history starts with prehistoric period and prehistoric periods are those period in which there is no written history. Okay, so we try to collect evidences uh, through various archaeological excavation and through archaeological ex uh, excavations we have divided this period into mainly three parts one is the paleolithic which is further subdivided you know? then there is mesolithic period and then there is neolithic period so paleolithic period started from 2 million bc to 10000 bc important paleolithic site that you have to memorize includes uh, kalardgi basin bhimbetka Hansgi, Kurnul Caves, Narmada Valley. Okay, these are very important Paleolithic sites. Tools were made of limestone and fire was discovered during this period. These two are very important facts. Now we will talk about Mesolithic period. Mesolithic period started from 10,000 BC to 8,000 BC. In this period, microliths were found at Brahmagiri, Narmada and Gujarat. Okay. And domestication of animals as well as cattle rearing began during Meso uh, Mesolithic period and significant climatic changes also occurred during Mesolithic period. Now we will see Neolithic period which is extremely important for this examination. Neolithic period as well as Neolithic sites. So Neolithic period started from 8000 BC and ended in 2000 BC. In this period the wheel was discovered. And agriculture started during this period. Inam Gao is an early Neolithic village, and major megalithic sites uh, uh, include uh, Brahmagiri and uh, Adi Chanalur. We will study in detail in coming slide about the Neolithic sites. So, what happened when when there was a discovery of wheel? Uh, one can move from one place to another. This is one thing. Second is when agriculture started then people also started uh, living in a settled manner and wheel uh, propelled them to trade. So these two had a marked change in the history of ancient India. Uh, now we will see Indus Valley civilization which started in 30, uh, 3300 BC and ended in 1700 BC. So early uh, Harappan phase was from 3300 BC to 2600 BC and this phase uh, lasted for ap approximately 700 years you know? and um, the Indus Valley civilization used an early form of the Indus script for writing. This civilization was known for its urban planning was uh, having a citadel uh, upper and lower town having uh, uh, streets coming and meeting at 90 degree having a very good uh, waste uh, system and also having a kind of uh, city which has many important things like granaries, great path etc. So it was known to be far ahead than its time. Now mature Harappan phase was from 2600 BC to 1700 BC in which large cities and urban areas emerged with urban planning. Excellent sewage and drainage system as I told a system of uniform weights and measures and knowledge of proto dentistry was known during this period. Late Harappan phase which was uh, from 1700 BC to 1300 BC. This phase marked the decline of the Indus Valley civilization although many elements of the civilization continued in later cultures as well. Now we will see one of the very important thing which has been asked by UPSC again and again throughout is the uh, important Indus Valley sites. Okay, so we will look into uh, the important ones. So if we see in the top there is Manda, then Ropad, Harappa, you know? Harappa ke just adjacent mein you can see agar aap thoda niche jayenge to Kalibangan hai, uh, idhar aap jayenge to Banavali hai, it is near uh, present day Haryana, Rakhi Gadi aap dekhiega, to further west mein jata hai, it is near the अपने जो प्रेजेंट है राजस्थान में है एंड देन इफ यू विल मूव फर्दर ईस्टवर्ड्स देर विल बी आलमगीरपुर व्हिच इज नियर बाय मीरठ तो वो ईस्टर्न मोस्ट साइट है एंड वेस्टर्न मोस्ट की बात करूं तो सुतकागंज दौर जो 
एकदम ही वेस्टर्न मोस्ट है एकदम आप वेस्ट में चले जाइए तो एकदम ही आ, आपका ये वेस्टर्न मोस्ट साइट है इस स्लाइड को पॉज करके कम से कम टू मिनट्स तक देखिए अगर हम बात करें दी साइट्स इन गुजरात देन वी कैन सी रन ऑफ कच्छ के जस्ट एडजेंट में देर इज धोलावीरा देन देर इज सुरकोतादा लोथल विच इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर डॉक यार्ड एक्सेट्रा है ना देन कुंतसी है ना धोलावीरा वॉज अ सिटी हैविंग थ्री लेयर्स है ना दीज देर आर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स अबाउट ईच ऑफ दी दी साइट्स विच आई एम गिविंग यू अ टास्क टू रीड और इम्पॉर्टेंट फाइंडिंग्स ये जो भी इम्पॉर्टेंट साइट्स हैं गो एंड रीड अबाउट दैट ओके देर इज बालाकोट एंड नवसारो मोहनजोदाड़ो चानूदाड़ो है ना चानूदाड़ो वॉज बालाकोट एंड चानूदाड़ो वॉज फेमस और बैंगल्स एक्सेट्रा है ना एवरी वन हैज़ अ पिक्युलरिटी विच यू नीड टू रिमेंबर जस्ट पॉज इट एंड सी दी लोकेशन लोकेशन आर एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल्सो हैव अ रीड बिकॉज समटाइम्स यू पी एस इज ऑल्सो आज दैट इज इट अंडस्टली साइट और अशोकनेक डीट और समथिंग लाइक दिस सो इन पास दिस हैज़ बीन आस्ट बाई यू पी एस सी सो डू रीड ऑल दीज साइट्स नाउ वी विल सी इंपॉर्टेंट न्योलिथिक साइट्स इन इंडिया so one of the important neolithic site is halur which is in andhra pradesh halur is an important neolithic site located in andhra pradesh then there is mahagara which is in uttar pradesh uh, maski uh, is a, again a significant uh, neolithic site poliampalli is located in andhra pradesh is another notable neolithic site other neolithic sites are uh, the chirand in bihar hai na uh, sangana kaler utnur दाउजली हादिंग इज इन त्रिपुरा एंड आसाम बुरजा होम विच इज फेमस फॉर पिट हाउसेज इज इन कश्मीर गुफकराल इज ऑल्सो इन कश्मीर दैन देर इज कोडे कल देर इज कोलधीवा कोलधीवा इज इन उत्तर प्रदेश अगेन मेहरगढ़ इज वेरी फेमस इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर कॉटन कल्टिवेशन इट इज बिलीव दैट कॉटन कल्टिवेशन स्टार्टेड इन मेहरगढ़ इट सेल्फ इट इज इन पाकिस्तान एंड देन देर इज अक्कला कोटा नाउ वी विल सी द पीरियड ऑफ वैदिक एज so vedic age is uh, somewhere around 1700 bc to 500 bc further divided into early vedic period which is also known as rigvedic period and later vedic age so early vedic age started from 1700 bc and ended in 1000 bc this period represents the time when the oldest of the veda the rigveda was compiled uh, the king was believed to be the protector of the people and the caste system started uh, it was not rigid it became rigid in the later vedic age it, it but it uh, became a kind of cemented thing you know it it uh, got a structure to be precise so major events included uh, is the that early vedic period uh, also coincided with a somewhat later harappan period uh, and this period is known for like uh, further in in hands in uh, hunting and gathering okay uh, the uh, this period is not known for uh, agricultural practices but this period is uh, better known for hunting and gathering okay then there is later vedic age in which agriculture will become a prominent uh, thing and uh, the the position of raja will also enhance there will be a kind of fixed taxation all of these will happen and all the other three vedas will be written during later vedic age which is from 1000 bc to 500 bc in the early vedic age the uh, the status of women is uh, is higher they can participate in sabhiti etc and uh, can uh, we can, we have uh, notable sages as well in the early vedic age uh, however in later vedic age uh, the position of women will decline there will be uh, the the caste system will also become a bit rigid and somewhat during uh, this period only there is the birth of mahavira and uh, gautam buddha during this time itself as the rigidity will increase these buddhism and jainism will try to challenge it okay the orthodoxy which will enhance in later vedic age and the standardization of sanskrit grammar by panini also happened around 500 bc now as i said during 500 bc to 550 ad there are three notable things which will happen in ancient india the first is rise of jainism and buddhism so jainism was based on the teaching of tirthankaras and uh, buddhism based on the teaching of lord buddha i have discussed in great detail jainism and buddhism in separate video just see the playlist if you want to go in great details i have discussed everything about that theek okay. hai and 
if you see the emperor ashoka played a decisive role in the spread of buddhism not only in the country but also in uh, ceylon which is present in sri lanka okay uh, and chandragupta maurya played a decisive role in the spread of jainism theek okay? hai then there is uh, uh, there are many kingdoms which will come mahajana padas mahajana padas will be the kingdoms which will become more important than others because they will have bigger army bigger territory they will uh, start collecting tax and their status will enhance in all the mahajana padas the the one mahajana pada which will gain prominence will be magadha and there are many reasons behind it one is that uh, it was situated near uh, 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 a kind of river fort river fort what what is uh, that is ki bahut sare rivers aake milte the and it's very easy for transportation uh, so one factor is the second is that they had ample amount of resources ample amount of elephants forest also they had ample amount of woods etc and um, uh, of course the uh, able administrator like uh, bimbisara ajaf satru so they also played a decisive role in the expansion first their uh, their capital was in rajgir and then it uh, got transferred to patliputra and from there uh, there will be establishment of nanda dynasty etc uh, nanda dynasty uh, the mahapadma nanda will be the one of the greatest ruler of uh, the nanda dynasty but dhananand will become wicked and will have a lot of arrogance will will not listen to the people uh, also uh, dhananand was the one who stopped alexander the great Uh, there was a fight between alexander great and porus which will be very fierce and alexander will uh, even though porus will lose the battle alexander will say that he is a great and mighty uh, fighter one of the decisive role that was played during that time was elephants and uh, then one of the minister said that dhananand has around uh, 50 times more elephants than porus and thus alexander said that we should not move forward but as dhananand was not a good ruler uh, the father of chanakya acharya chanak tried to have changes he was disrespected and then his son chanakya will have will uh, arrange a plot will make uh, a kind of arrangement in which he will overthrow the nanda dynasty and make chandragupta maurya the king and with this there will be establishment of the uh, mauryan empire so chandragupta maurya will also try to expand the empire uh, as well as he was a, a, an able administrator and arthashastra will be written during this time period which will be also implemented uh, not in fully in mauryan dynasty but a bit of it will will be reflected his son uh, uh, the bindusara will expand further he will also include uh, the regions occupied by greeks etc and marry the uh, the queen of uh, uh, the daughter of greek king as well so all of these will happen and then there will be the rise of ashoka so ashoka was not great initially he was known as chand ashoka because he was very angry he was uh, uh, he was also violent and uh, he we wanted just to have the seat of power and for that it is uh, believed that he killed his 99 brothers uh, there are different stories but ashoka vadana uh, by buddhism stays uh, uh, stays this and uh, what happens is then ashoka when f- fighting kaling war there are uh, above 1 lakh people who dies and when he sees them he he believes that was it worthy enough to have this battle lakhs of people died many of the widow women asked him what you got from this and then slowly uh, mogali putra tisa one of the buddhist monk will try him to become uh, the uh, to to uh, to choose the path of dhamma to choose the path of non violence and from there he will change his ideology to buddhism but he will be tolerant towards other religion as well and then he will not fight any battle he will uh, erect many edicts throughout the country which we will see in the next slide uh, in which there will be written uh, dhammas philosophy will be written which is a kind of a code of conduct uh, which says that everyone whether uh, they are poor or rich should be respected alike whether elder or 
uh, younger should be respected and loved and uh, there should be true ceremonials not um, extravagant uh, uh, money spent on marriages as well as other things uh, but uh, to help others uh, all of these things are written in the uh, dhamma okay and the Mauryan empires will be succeeded by Sunga, Kanva, Satvahana, Indo-Greeks, Parthians, Sakas, Kushanas. Okay, Satvahanas will be a, a bigger empire and uh, that will have a big impact. Okay, and you must have heard about Gautamui Putra, Satkarni, etc. So, they, they uh, had their mother's name as, uh, uh, as the first name. Okay, this is a peculiar thing. And Kushanas, you all know that they are very important for their contribution in art and architecture. And Kanishka had played a decisive role in the spread of Mahayana Buddhism. And the fourth Buddhist council will happen during the time period of the Kanishka in the Kundalgram in Kashmir. During this time period only, uh, there will be the starting of Sangam Age. I have discussed in great detail the Sangam Age, which you can refer. It is a very important for the development of literature as well as culture in the southern India, uh, most importantly in Tamil Nadu. Um, the first Sangam age will be presided by Agastya and Agastya uh, sage is believed to have originated uh, the, uh, the foundation of Tamil language uh, is credited to Agastya sage you know? the, uh, because Tamil language is one of the oldest language of the country along with Sanskrit they too are the oldest language and thus carries a lot of culture of India and there are lots of uh, literature which are written during these three uh, Sangam ages first Sangam age nothing survived much the second and third third may there are a lot of things which survived the one of the most important uh, books which came from this period is Tirukural which was written by Tiruvalluvar which is very very important and there were three important kings which are Chola, Chira and Pandyas kingdom in southern India other details you can go and watch the video of Sangam period. Now we will see the edicts of Asoka which has been asked by uh, UPSC uh, a lot of times. So from starting from the uh, northern part. So Mansera is the topmost then there is Sabzgadi. In the western side there is Kandhar. Then we will go downward there is Kalsi, uh, there is Topra, there is Merat. Uh, in, there is Lumini, Lauria Nandangad, uh, Rampurva in the eastern side, Lauria, uh, Araraj, Koshambi. Okay, then we will go towards the Deccan area in Gujarat. There is Girnar, then Sopara, Dhauli is in Odisha, Jaugoda is also in Odisha. Then there is uh, Amravati and Sannati in Andhra Pradesh, and Yerragudi in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so these. Uh, Square represents major rock edicts, triangle represents pillar edicts and white white small uh, squares represents minor rock edicts. There were three classifications of it. Then important development happened during the Gupta Empire which uh, stayed for around 500 years 382 880. Sri Gupta was the founder of Gupta dynasty. Rain started from 240 CE to 280 CE. He used the title of Maharaja. The Gupta Empire was an ancient empire and had a mightiest of king, Samudra Gupta. He was also known as Indian Napoleon, you know, being one of the most famous ruler. The Gupta set up their rule over the fertile plains of Madhya Desh, you know, Job Central India, also known as Anu Ganga, the Middle Gangetic Basin. So, Isme Atatha Saketa, which is Ayodhya, Prayag, uh, and uh, Magadha, mostly Bihar, all of these regions were uh, occupied by Guptas. The Guptas made good use of the iron ore reserves in central India and South Bihar and also took advantage of their proximity to the areas in North India which carried on silk trade you know, with the Byzantine Empire or Eastern Roman Empire. The Gupta period in ancient India is referred to as the Golden Age because of the numerous achievement in the field of arts, literature, science and technology. It also brought about the political unification of the subcontinent. One of the important rulers is Chandragupta II because his court at Ujjain was adorned by nine famous scholars known as the Navratna and UPSC has asked around three four questions in the past decade on this. So we will have a look. 
the first of the nine jewel was kalidasa he wrote uh, abhigyan sakuntalam one of the best 100 literary works in the world and also the earliest indian work to be translated to european languages hai na uh, It, there are many other kumar sambhavam ritu samhara which are written by and uh, malvika agni mitra which are written by kalidasa the second one is amar simba his work amar kosha is a vocabulary of sanskrit roots uh, homonyms and synonyms okay it has three parts containing around 10000 words and it, it is also known as trikanda okay the th- next uh, ni- uh, of the nine jewel is varah meera he wrote three important books he composed panch siddhantika uh, the five astronomical system his work brihat samhita is great work in the sanskrit language it deals with variety of subjects like astronomy astrology geography architecture weather animals marriage and omens his brihat jataka is considered to be a standard work on astrology then dhanvantri he is considered to be the father of ayurveda uh, then ghata karapara an expert in sculpture and architecture shanku shanku is an architect who wrote the silpa shastra then kaha panaka he was an astrologer who wrote jyotisha shastra then vararuchi vararuchi was author of uh, uh, prakrit prakasha the first grammar of the prakrit language then vetala bhata he was the author of mantra shastra and was a magician If you see post Gupta, there was deterioration of imperial Guptas after the fall of Gupta. The Magadha region and its capital Patliputra experienced a decline. There were rise of new powers. Important center of power arose, including the Vardhana dy- dynasty, Mokharis, Hunas, Pushyabhutis, Gaudas, Varmans, Matrakas. All of these arose to power, and there was also emergence of Rajputs and other. The Rajput Sena, Chauhan succeeded later. Uh, further shaping the political landscape of ancient india now we will see the uh, post gupta map so if we see in the northern part there is thaneshwar kannauj is an important part for which there will be three petite struggle hai na and one of the important king uh, who will control the kannauj is harshvardhana hai na there will be uh, matrakas in this uh, in the western side chalukyas in, in the deccan in the far south there will be pallavas Uh, who will be ruling there will be kaling in the uh, nearby the odisha region all of these will be ruling uh, during that time period and there will be a constant tussle for the fertile and prosperous kannauj okay and there will be a great king pulkeshin second who will defeat uh, the harsha and will uh, will further expand the empire okay so all of these will happen i have discussed in great detail about chalukya etc in a separate lecture Uh, with this we will end the ancient history quick revision uh, lecture and i hope this is helpful for you so take care best wishes